What is a good model? When building prediction models, it's an important question to ask. Does this model perform well enough? Of course, the answer will largely depend on what you intend to use that model for and how much margin for error there is. But from an evaluation perspective, it's often useful to compare your model to reasonable baselines. While we don't need to compare our models to others to establish whether or not they're good, it is certainly useful to understand whether your modeling efforts are truly improving upon alternative approaches. Comparing the baselines provides guidance to understand how modeling choices impact performance and to what degree. This can be important in practical uh, cases where computational costs and costs for deployment uh, are other considerations. So regardless, the, the best baseline that we want to compare our model to, generally speaking, uh, is the previous best model that has been trained for that task. But of course, this isn't always feasible. What if we're the first to try to predict our dependent variable? Or what if others have predicted this, but in different contexts where the two approaches aren't directly comparable? In these cases, we may need to identify other reasonable baselines. If there are other alternatives, it's generally recommended to avoid uh, solely making straw man comparisons uh, but certain simple modeling approaches may still provide interesting insights. So if you're unfamiliar, uh, a straw man comparison is one that is easily beaten. Uh, and in a prediction modeling perspective, even though straw man models, as we will look at a couple of these uh, in just a moment, even though they are simple, uh, they actually do perform reasonably well, uh, considering how simple the approach actually is. And it really also puts into perspective how well your machine learning, uh, your fancy method is performing on top of this. So if you are training a machine learning model uh, to predict some dependent variable of interest, it should be able to outperform simpler approaches. Otherwise, it raises the question as to whether or not this was really worth the effort. There are some simple models that we can use in comparing our model's performance. A majority class model, for, exa uh, for example here, is considered the simplest modeling approach and uses just two steps. First, we use the training set to identify the most frequent label. Then, we predict that label for all samples of the test set. For example, if we had a data set where 15% of the samples were labeled as off-task, that is, where most samples are not off-task, our majority class model would simply predict zero for all examples of this test set. Improving on the majority class, we could also observe an average model. In this case, we find the average of each binary label in our training set, or in other words, we calculate the proportionality of each label, uh, or we also could just take the average of a continuous valued label, uh, and then just use that average uh, as the prediction for all samples of the test set. In our example from earlier, if 15% of labels are off task, we might predict 0.15 for all samples in the test set. These models both predict the same value for, uh, they both predict the same value for all of the test samples. Uh, and as such, by definition, the AUC and Kappa values will indicate that these models perform no better than random chance. However, accuracy and other metrics might show differently. The accuracy in this case, in our uh, example from earlier, uh, would be 85%. We were even though we predicted the same value for all of our samples, it was right for 85% of those samples. If we look at another example where we want to predict student dropout, where 98% of students graduated and just 2% dropped out of school, uh, what would be the majority class model's predictions? Uh, go ahead and, and take a guess, pause the video, uh, make sure you, you understand here. 
Did you get it right? Uh, the model would be predicting zero for all students. Again, very simple. And what would the accuracy of this model be? Again, test your understanding. In this case, we would have 98% accuracy. By just predicting zero for all samples, we have 98% accurate uh, accuracy for our model. So before now, if I told you that I had a model that had 89, excuse me, 98% accuracy in predicting whether or not students will drop out of school, I bet a few of you would be impressed. That is until you realize that this model is actually completely useless. It just predicts that every student will pass uh, regardless of, of any other features. If we train a model and find that it achieves 97% accuracy, is this good? By this measure alone, we might say that the majority class model outperforms the logistic regression, which is true. But we must also consider that the majority class has no utility. The, the logistic regression here may produce some false positives, but may also still have some utility. It might be able to identify some of the students who are at risk of dropping out. So if we additionally report other metrics, such as recall perhaps in this case, we start to paint a, a different picture. Here, now we see that the logistic regression has lower accuracy, yes, but higher recall. It was able to identify 25% of the students who dropped out of school. Perhaps it could still be improved uh, as it seemingly produced some false positives and false negative predictions, but now the argument can be made that it is outperforming the simple baseline along at least one of these dimensions. Whether or not that's good enough, again, will depend on the intended use of this model. If the model failed to meaningfully outperform the majority class for both metrics, then it's of course likely that you should maybe rethink your modeling approach or try to improve the features that you're using within your models.